met her in the fall. He took her to a movie, and when they done it all, he took her to a movie. Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Fabulous Picture Show. I'm Amanda Palmer. Now for the first ever Doha Tribeca Film Festival, which was held here at the stunning Museum of Islamic Art, we were looking for the perfect film and filmmaker to provide great entertainment for our opening night, but also to embody the spirit of our festival. We found that in Mira Naya and her latest film, Amelia. After this round the world flight, Miss Earhart, are you gonna give up long distance flying? Not while there's still life left in me. Always ready for a new adventure. <laughs> In this program, we'll be taking a closer look at Amelia and sharing our festival masterclass with Mira Naya, one of the most successful female directors of our time. Assalamu alaikum, Doha. Oh, I'm so happy to be here today for the Middle Eastern premiere of Amelia. Miss Amelia Earhart. Why do you want to fly? I want to be free. It's no surprise that Mira Nye is attracted to fearless females like Amelia Earhart. We're going to fly around the world. It can be done. Well, let's change that. Like the aviator who disappeared attempting to fly around the world. There's more to life than being a passenger. Naya has defied skeptics to build a career spanning Hollywood, India, and independent cinema. We both came from tiny, small towns. We both had in incredibly big appetites for the world, much beyond this, uh, where we came from. And I always knew that, uh, that I would see this world. And I loved that she wasn't born into privilege. You know, she made her way. Uh, and uh, again, at a time that it was absolutely impossible for women to think that they could fly. I do feel an affinity. I, I, I refuse to accept boundaries myself. And, and, and I just know, if, uh, and my eyes are definitely focused on, on what I want to do. 52-year-old Naya began pushing boundaries with her early documentaries. Do you feel any shame? Why shame? You leave shame behind when you enter this profession. Her intimate portrayal of Indian strippers certainly shook things up. When I go out at night, sometimes the customer sees me and says, look, there goes that naked dancing girl, that whore. I say, Mat, you enjoyed me on stage and now you say this? That's when I feel shame. And her first feature, Salam Bombay, portrayed the gritty life of India's street kid. It follows 10-year-old runaway Krishna, experiencing love and tragedy while desperately trying to fund his journey back home. You know, a kid who comes on the street is someone who has already traveled a long journey in, while in childhood and yet wants that childhood. <laughs> Uh, but the pain of it, the loneliness of it, and the, the fact that you can never go back to a home that you once knew, that is the loneliness of a street child. And that's what Salam Bombay, you know, both is about and came from. Competing with Bollywood's bouncy dance numbers and happy endings, it failed to find a domestic audience. But it was a huge success internationally, earning an Oscar nomination for Best Foreign Film. Oh, look, there's an accident. Now Hollywood was interested, and the Harvard graduate put rising star Denzel Washington opposite unknown student Sarita Chowdhury. You think I'm trying to hit on you? For a multiracial romance set deep in America's South. Mm. Are you? I am waiting. Naya was evolving her trademark of lush visuals, telling heartbreaking stories of how migration impacts on families. I am like Cuba, used by many, conquered by no one. From the journey of Cuban refugees led by Marissa Tomei. What do you want in America that I can give you here? I love every spreadly. To the tale of Trailer Trash America, led by Uma Thurman. Hey! Oh, hey. Where you been? What? Well, I've been right here. Good for you. Well, thanks. In her masterpiece, Monsoon Wedding. I can't wait around to see if Vikram's wife is ever going to agree to divorce him. I've read too many magazines, Rhea. 
Naya tackles adultery and abuse within India's middle class. It wasn't enough that he touched me when I was a girl. That wasn't enough that you had to teach Alia how older people kiss. It won the top prize at the Venice Film Festival and became America's highest ever grossing Indian film. When Naya finally took on traditional rags to riches costume drama, it wasn't in Bollywood but in Britain with Reese Witherspoon in Vanity Fair. Naya followed this with a return to the cross cultural beat. Did you guys know all the stuff about him when he decided to name me that he was paranoid, suicidal, friendless, depressed? You forgot to mention that he was also a genius. A story about a Bengali family in America. I don't understand how you guys could name me after someone so strange. Her latest film, Amelia, retains Naya's trademark theme how crossing boundaries, emotional and physical, can bring heartbreak and tragedy, but also salvation and freedom. You are right! Your reaction cut the switch. You saved our ass! I don't fly and I don't jump off airplanes with any kind of alacrity, but I, uh, I feel like I can do anything. Roll sound! Everything's rolling. And action! It's such an obsessive task, making a film, that I just wouldn't be able to do that kind of work without really feeling every day that I must do it. You managed to dance in all worlds of filmmaking, documentaries, Hollywood, indie cinema. You do it beautifully. How would you define yourself as a filmmaker? Oh, I don't. You, I leave the definitions to you. But I have a reputation of making big-looking films on very little yeah. money. I don't yeah. like that reputation because I want lots of money. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I, I, I have this thing, you know. <laughs> You love the preparation. You have to have that preparation. I, I do something very pretentiously called the manifesto, where I write about uh, each scene, whatever comes to my mind, how I visualize it in any way, from costuming to clothing to the light to whatever comes to me, you know, about that scene. And I prepare this manifesto of every scene, and I make this visual binder that I distribute to my main heads of department about two, three months before I shoot. And so by the time we are shooting, everyone knows exactly what they are doing. And that's how we achieve it. I mean, Monsoon Wedding I made consciously in one million dollars because I wanted to know after 12 years of making bigger films whether I could be still lean, mean fighting machine, you know, where I could go back yeah. to that. Yeah. And, and then when Sabrina Dhawan, the writer, and I started cooking up the script, we ended up on, a, you know, five major subplots, uh, I don't know, 70, <laughs> 80, 78 speaking parts, a big film actually, yeah, but we had only raised the million bucks and I wanted to do it only in a million. I still watch Monsoon Wedding and I just, it's just euphoria. You know, there are some films you make where there we say in Hindi there's some jadu in them, some magic in them, and there is something in uh, Monsoon Wedding that is magic. We had no money to process the film, so we were never looking at the film while we were shooting it. But when I got back to New York and looked at the work, it had this energy in it, you know, because everyone was psyched and ready and prepped and they knew we had to go, go, go. And, and go, go without sacrifice. Just being a woman in this industry is difficult, but when you add to that being a woman of color, it's really daunting. But you've been at this for much longer and you are the trailblazer. So what was the experience like for you? How did it get easier? And what advice do you have? It, it started from really being always the outsider. At home in India, I was considered a weird novelty, and abroad, I was a complete novelty. <laughs> and uh, so I followed my instinct, and I was always very relieved and proud to come from where I came from, even though where I came from, was no, I was not understood at home, you know? But still, that was my treasure. And I think this gave me a, a toughness to deal with the endless rejections that are bound to be part and parcel of filmmaking. 
जैसे चिल्लर रूम से बाहर जो भी रास्ते में है खिद दिया फटा फटा I started as an actor. I was an actor in Indian uh, political street theater. I came to uh, America on a scholarship uh, to Harvard University, and I stumbled into documentary filmmaking uh, at the college. But I was lucky because my teachers were uh, Ricky Leacock and D. A. Pennybaker, who really essentially had created the cinema verite movement. Uh, the cinema verite meaning the truth of life, about you know a sync sound camera, mobile recorder. Go into people's lives. If I want to find out anything, I'm not going to read Time magazine. I'm not going to read Newsweek. I'm not going to read any of these magazines. I mean, because they just got too much to lose by printing the truth. You know that. So I made these documentaries for about seven years. You know, living with strippers in a Bombay nightclub, living with street kids, living with really in those in the 80s when you don't doctor documentaries, you just surrender to the world and you film as you can see, and then you create a narrative in the editing room. She has spent a mere two weeks with her husband, and now her life is defined by his absence. I always uh, want to remain a student of life, and that is the source of much of my uh, fictional ideas. Because I still believe that truth is stranger and more powerful than fiction. Whenever I ask him something, he gets angry with me. But you have to ask him what's on his mind. You haven't asked. The puchut na di. I haven't asked. Join us for more of Mira Nair's masterclass. That's after the break in part two. He met her in.